This is the nation's river, and this is everybody's river, and this is one of the most magnificent places on earth. These beautiful, spectacular canyons have been a focal point of national protection. These canyons are also awesome places to build dams. This is one of the most heavily regulated rivers in the world. This river has bigger reservoirs and bigger diversions than just about any other river, certainly in North America. We could just walk away from this place as a society and say, well, we put all these dams here, we're just not even gonna try to have a healthy natural environment. We have the largest population of endangered humpback chub anywhere in the basin. The humpback chub is just this piece of this ecosystem that remains here, even though it's incredibly altered by the flows of Glen Canyon Dam. I think of it as like the indicator species for the health of the whole ecosystem. This is a complicated place because it's the clash of a native ecosystem with uh, a set of physical conditions that that native ecosystem has never had to deal with before. The largest difference between how the river was and how the river is, is what the dam has done. This river is no longer a sand bedded, turbid stream. This is a clear, gravel, cold stream. This is a stream that trout love. It's created a Blue Ribbon, internationally famous trout fishery. We have this huge question, which is, how do non-native trout and humpback chub live together in the same river? And is that possible? We've documented that fish are food limited. Both rainbow trout and native fishes in Grand Canyon appear to be limited by the availability of high quality invertebrate prey. People may not think about what supports those fish populations, and so I would point to the base of that food web. Aquatic insects have a you know pretty complex life cycle where they spend their larval stage in the river feeding and then transform into a winged adult and make the leap to the land. Really, those swarms are the core energy of this entire system because the fish are eating them as their larvae and then they emerge as adults and they're feeding the terrestrial system as well. There's things like birds, bats, spiders. I think aquatic ecologists have been limited in Grand Canyon with the kind of questions they can ask based on the logistics. Even though USGS sends a lot of trips here throughout the year, even though we have a lot of hardworking people down here, it is impossible to get the full picture just through those trips. These emergent aquatic insects are um, virtually throughout the entire canyon, um, throughout the entire year, and to get a better understanding and a better picture of that, we need a lot of specimen, we need a lot of collection points. That's the thing that's so exciting about the Citizen Science Project is we can tap into the guide's season-long access to the river and characterize aquatic insect emergence, you know, in the Grand Canyon, all 240 miles of it for the entire growing season. So it really opens up the kinds of questions that we can ask. The powerfulness of the Citizen Science is it's pretty mind-blowing. I mean, for the food-based program, there's no way they could gather all that data on their own without the help of these river guides. And we do also get private boaters and educational trips, such as Grand Canyon Youth. There's no way that they could know as much about what they know, and there's no way they could tell the story they can now tell because of the guide's involvement. Putting this dam in changed this river. It made it cold, it made the water clear, and it also deeply impacted the insect fauna. 
we've lost a lot of our, our aquatic insects, things like mayflies and caddisflies. We think that Grand Canyon used to harbor a very diverse aquatic insect assemblage and those are gone now. By understanding what drives these cycles of population and of emergence, we can better understand how this ecosystem functions. And if we better understand how it functions, we can better know how to manage it. We have a tool, a dam. If we could manipulate the flows to maximize insect production, especially at times that are important for these endangered species, then that's the game of adaptive management. Most of our river guides that get involved are just curious. They want to learn more about this place that they live in at least half the year. Part of it's just being involved a little bit, helping and feeling like you're contributing to the canyon and besides, you know, seeing what you get. And, um, and it does contribute to the knowledge base for sure. I tell you, none of the science that we've done down here in Grand Canyon could ever have been conducted without the, the full support of the guides who make it possible for us to work here.